This week in 207X, we are going to talk about a topic that's perhaps my favorite topic in all of paleoanthropology. That's the origin of our genus, the genus Homo. Now this is an evolutionary event that eventually gives rise to us. All the questions that surround the origin of the genus Homo are questions about the pattern of evolution that then follows. What are the features that gave rise to Homo? What's the evolutionary sequence of events that gave rise to Homo? And how did that subsequently affect the pattern of evolution that eventually established us? So the question of the origin of the genus Homo, in my view, is really the question of how we began to start becoming human. The evolution of the offspring and the scenes is tremendously interesting. They again represent this true missing link, and yet it's the evolution of a different kind of ape in many ways. And certainly that sets the stage, but the arrival of the genus Homo is really the evolution of humans. It's the origin of our pattern of behavior, our pattern of morphology, and the pattern of evolution that gave rise to us. And that story largely starts with the identification of the genus and species Homo habilis by Philip Tobias and colleagues in the early 1960s on work done at Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania. Now, Homo habilis is an interesting species because there's lots of controversies around it. Lots of people don't like it. They think that all kinds of fossils that simply aren't clearly later humans and aren't clearly earlier Australopithecines end up being designated as Homo habilis. So it represents an interesting case study to begin thinking about these questions, about the transition from Australopithecus to Homo. But first it's necessary to think about that original model that Tobias had when he developed the idea for Homo habilis. Tobias was working with colleagues like Lewis and Mary Leakey, John Naper, and many Kenyan and Tanzanian nationals at sites like Olduvai Gorge. And these sites were different than the cave sites in South Africa, in the sense that these were open air sites, where materials were scattered across landscapes and appeared to at least be coming from the same time in the same place, giving a different perspective on these fossils and the archaeological materials associated with them. And what began to come out of the ground at Olduvai, what they began to find on the surface, were jaws like these and stone tools like this. Now what these draws give us an indication of is a different kind of pattern of evolution. Recall last week when we were talking about the robust Australopithecines, we talked about these specimens that were getting larger and larger post-canine dentition. They were developing these hyper-robust masticatory apparatuses. Now compare that to these specimens here. This specimen, OH7, in fact, is part of the, the type specimen for Homo habilis. And what Tobias saw in this specimen were these small incisors, small canine, but especially these small premolars. That process of molarization of the premolars, which we saw in the later Australopithecines, those big, bulbous, almost balloon-like premolars, show significant reduction in this specimen. We're clearly showing a different trajectory of evolution. But it wasn't just these mandibles in their teeth that gave Tobias the model for Homo habilis. It was also the fact that they were found in conjunction with stone tools like this. And other remains, including finger bones, which seem to suggest an evolution of traits in the fingers themselves corresponding to the production of these kinds of stone tools. And then finally, cranial remains, which began to show tantalizing hints of increasing brain size. So the overall model for Homo habilis that Tobias had in mind, and a model that's still important for our thinking about the origin of Homo today, is that it was a combination of larger brains, reduced dentition, and the use of stone tools to change the dietary ecology of this species that gave rise to the origin and subsequent evolution of the genus Homo. Now, we're going to talk a lot this week about a lot of fossils and specific evolutionary events that correspond with this, but this was the model that Tobias had in mind. This was a hominin that was using its brain to make stone tools, which was subsequently changing its diet and subsequently changing the pattern of morphology that we saw in its jaws and teeth. And that gave rise to an overall different evolutionary pattern, a different evolutionary niche that humans and the genus Homo would come to occupy.